Good afternoon, family, and welcome to Critical Sense Making Sessions, facilitated by yours truly, Revolutionary Rika. Today's episode is episode 16. Today's topic is health and wellness. Today's guest is Tamiko Garner. She is a San Francisco native who is passionate about sharing how a plant-based vegan way of eating is good and good for you, inspiring others to start their health journey on their terms and dancing. Tammy, tell us a little bit more about who you are and, and you choose one word to describe how you're showing up. Um, well, let's see. I am, as you just said, Tamiko Garner. I'm also known as the plant-based vegan sister. Um, and I love to keep it real and relatable and inspire people to adopt a plant-based way of eating. Um, and I'm, you know, like you said, I my most of my teenage years here in the Bay Area. Uh, and I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. Woo-hoo-hoo, shy town And uh, so I came out here like in eighth grade. And, uh, you know, I had been, you know, ate regularly and then been vegan now, plant-based vegan now for four years. So, um, yeah. And how I'm showing up today, I'm just going to be authentic. Just be authentic myself. Well, welcome. Welcome to the Critical Sense Making Sessions. And let's um, jump in. So I have an icebreaker question. What is on your menu for Thanksgiving? (laughs) That's funny you asked that because I was like, Mom, what are we going to have for Thanksgiving? So sweet potato pie is on the menu for sure. There, there, there won't be Thanksgiving without a sweet potato pie. And it will be a plant-based vegan sweet potato pie. And I've done a, I've had this a pie at one of my events and people couldn't tell whether it was vegan or not. So I'm just telling you, that's just how good this, this pie is. Um, and I'm thinking about I might do a mac and cheese and um, some vegetables I might have some, I don't know if I'm going to have green, no, Brussels sprouts. I'm going to have some roasted Brussels sprouts and uh, da, 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 and some cornbread dressing. Mm, sounds good. Sounds good. Well, let's jump right in so I can learn, a little, we can learn a little bit more about veganism and vegan, okay. plant-based vegan lifestyle. So tell us a little bit about life growing up in Chicago or San Francisco. <laughs> well, uh Life growing, well, I moved here in the Bay Area when I was in eighth grade. So, I, you know, I guess you could say most of my living has been my, most of my life has been here in the, in the Bay Area. Oh my goodness, my light went out. Um, here in the Bay Area. And um, so Chicago, grew up in the South Side of Chicago. All my family is still there, you know, um, here in the Bay Area. I enjoyed. it. I went to high school at Lowell High School in San Francisco. Um, went to college at Cal State Hayward, went, did a stint at City College, who, who didn't go to City College in San Francisco, <laughs> uh, and got married, had a kid, uh, got divorced, <laughs> and have a grown kid now. So um, life growing up in, in San Francisco was kind of cool. You know, I, I don't hang out too much there now, but, you know, I did, I liked it back in my young years. You know, we did a lot of riding the 15 third from one end to the other, <laughs> going to, you know, whoever's in the old school knows about the Palladium. So I used to hang out doing dancing there. So, um, but, you know, remembering um, the, the uh, Juneteenth on Fillmore, you know, just remembering that time. And actually living on Fillmore <laughs> at once upon a time. Um, so it, it definitely has its nuts. It has its, um, it's got a, its own little vibe. And then I moved to the East Bay and I've been an East Bay girl ever since. Sorry. <laughs> I've been an East Bay girl ever since. <laughs> but I enjoyed just growing up in San Francisco. I had a good time. Made some great got lifelong friends. Um, so that's really been great. Been great. All right. Thank you. So thinking back on your childhood, how did you practice health and wellness? I don't think I did, to be completely honest. I mean, um, as a kid, first, let me just say this. As a kid, I did not like vegetables. So it's kind of ironic that I am now a vegan and eat nothing but vegetables. (laughs) So that's kind of interesting. But, um, you know, I grew up on the typical foods that you eat, you know, um, I used to eat fried bologna and egg sandwiches. That's not the healthiest thing on the planet. Um, and um, vegetables to me was the corn. That's what I liked. I liked macaroni and cheese. I liked corn, you know, any of the bread. I love mayonnaise. I used to make mayonnaise sandwiches. So that's not a very, you know, that, that wasn't healthy. Now, my mom was 
my mom did make vegetables. She was like a gourmet cook. You know, she would make these little special gourmet meals. Um, but my family, like my aunts and great aunts, you know, cooked old school like greens. I did not like greens as a kid. Uh -uh. Did not like greens as a kid. I would throw them away. Yeah. Um, and got in trouble for doing it one time and was told, I know you threw them greens in the garbage. Go get some more. I'm like, that didn't even make sense. Well, if I didn't like it, why well, I got to eat them? <laughs> couldn't, couldn't get that concept, right? Um, so, you know, it was, just, it was not, not necessarily looked at as a, a health way, right? And I was always a chubby kid. So I was, you know, what you call pleasingly plump. So I was not a skinny child. So I've always had, uh, you know, weight, which is weight issues and, you know, always um, concerned about that. So, um, yeah. So, you know, not not the best in the health and wellness growing up as a kid. So I'm, I'm curious to know if you if you did you learn or were you exposed to health and wellness at school? Um, no, not that I can recall. To be, to be honest, I, not that I recall, not during my time. I mean, you know, what you had the school lunches and they weren't always the best things, right? You had corn dogs and, you know, them little flat tail hamburgers that were like, what, half an inch tall half and thick. <laughs> you know, you didn't eat it. Um, you had junk food. I love to snack and I love junk food. I love potato chips. Um, I still love potato chips today. I might have to go to Potato Chips Anonymous, but you know, it's okay. Um, so no, I don't. I don't recall uh, learning it in school at all. Not at all. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna move us into our second set of questions, and the first one is: How did health and wellness impact your adult life? Well, um, since changing over, because I'll start out. I was always. Um, I had done all different kind of ways of eating, right? Weight watchers and lemonade cleanses and stuff. Even as a teenager, my mom had put me on Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. So um, we had learned, you know, I learned about portion sizes, not that I followed it, but um, once I started really kind of getting it and I started doing, um, became vegetarian like in 1986, which is the first time I stopped eating any meat. I didn't have no chicken, no turkey. You know, I didn't even start out eating seafood. Um, and then I noticed weight started falling off. I had, you know, I was, you know, I had a lot of energy um, and little things like that. Um, and then four years ago, I decided to go plant-based vegan um, because I had actually put on quite a bit of weight. <laughs> um, I was like about 20 something pounds over and I was just like, this is ridiculous. Um, I need to do something about it because in my family, you know, there's a history of diabetes, high blood pressure, you know, high cholesterol, digestive cancers. You know, my mom had colon cancer, had another cousin, uh, uncle that had you know, colon cancer, a cousin. So I said, I've got to do something to change my story so that that doesn't become my story. And I want to, so I, I decided I've got to do something to be proactive and I could see myself heading in that direction, especially weight wise, um, because, you know, being 20, 30 pounds over is a pretty good amount of extra carrying around. I'm only five, three and a half. So that's, that's, that's you know, that looks a little round um, for myself. And I just wasn't, you know, I was going up a flight of stairs and was out of breath. So I was like, okay, this is not good. So um, once I started changing that, you know, I feel so much better. I have so much energy. My face has cleared up. I had, um, problem skin. I had acne skin growing up. So now I haven't had any issues with my skin since then. And I'm like, whoa, my face has never been this clear. <laughs> I'm like, wow. You know, not since I was like eight or nine. So um, hair grows, nails grow. I mean, just overall, I just feel good, especially when I'm eating the way that I know is the healthy way to eat, really focusing on good fruits and vegetables, right? Um, how was your diet? Sim well, you talked about how your diet was and you did talk, you, me you mentioned what you're doing now. So what forms of exercise do you practice? Oh, well, I started this, uh, I decided back, I guess it was April now, um, I decided since we're here in this COVID that 
I need to get outside and move. So I just started walking. I mean, I was exercising before the now, but just taking me right now where we are. Um, and I just decided that I was going to walk every day. And this is because we're in this pandemic and I need to get outside, get some fresh air, and I need to get the movement in my body. So I currently now do um, a walk jog, mainly jog. Um, I do strength training three days a week. And um, right now I am doing um, dancing for 30 days in a row. Uh, so far I have walked, today was day 212 days in a row that I have been either walking or jogging without a day off. I have not taken one day off. Um, I love weight. I do like weight training. I did used to do the weight training. I used to do spin. So um, I'll go do some hiking. So, uh, and dancing, of course, that's like my all time favorite exercise. <laughs> but you know, th that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. And a little bit of yoga, very little, just starting out on that. Awesome, thank you. So next, in the third set of questions, I wanna kick it off with what is veganism? So let me say that veganism is, is more of a lifestyle um, and it is, you know, no animal products in, in your food, your clothing, you know, it's a big, that's, it, it has a very activism um, component to it. There's also plant-based, which has kind of been more of my focus and plant-based is eating more whole foods. Um, whole food, plant-based foods. So that is, you know, no oils or reduced oils, no white sugars, no white flours, no processed foods. So it's a very healthy, clean way of eating. And a lot of times people kind of mix up the vegan and the plant-based. And the way I like to um, differentiate is that veganism is a lifestyle. Plant-based is whole food, plant-based is more of your way of eating. Because you can still, you know, you're not, you, it, it's, it has some animal activism to it, but probably not as much as the vegan side of things. So that's how I like to differentiate them. Thank you. And so what prompted your plant-based vegan journey? <laughs> so funny. I did the, you know, I don't know if anybody remembers the, or knows about the lemonade cleanse. So I was doing like a jump start. And, um, and then I found this book, I forgot to have the book with me, but I discovered this book, I was in the bookstore and I saw this book and it was called A Plant-Based Life. And I was like, huh, what's that about? And I started reading, I said, oh, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna give this a try. And it's been four years now. It's kind of the same way how I became a vegetarian. I, you know, I read a book called Fit for Life and it talked about how long food, I mean, how long meat stays in your system. I was like, ooh, gosh, I know it stays in your system that long, like days. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder how long I can go without eating meat. So that went, veg I was a vegetarian from 1986 to 2016. So for 30 years, I have not had, so actually technically 34 years, I have not had a piece of chicken a piece of turkey. I've had seafood. Um, I did start doing a little bit of that just because it's harder to go out to eat and get something on the menu to eat. Um, that was the only reason why. I did have eggs and cheese um, and dairy, but now no eggs, no cheese, no dairy, no seafood, nothing that um, breeds. Nothing that breeds. So what are the benefits of practicing um, plant-based vegan? The benefits are plentiful. <laughs> uh, one, it, it can definitely improve your history. I mean, your, your um, energy level. Like I mentioned earlier, um, my skin is there. Um, it, can help, it can help reduce inflammation because I know like a lot of people are dealing with inflammation and some of the foods that we eat do cause that inflammation that it can, they, can act, they can aid in causing inflammation. Um, my, if you have issues with cholesterol, you know, one thing is cholesterol is mainly found in animal products. So once you kind of cut those, you will have cut your cholesterol. Okay. Cause so that's, you know, one thing that you can look for if you're looking at vegan foods, um, if it has cholesterol on there, then that means it's an animal in there somewhere. Okay. So nine times out of 10. 
Um, the other benefits is you, you can release some weight. Now I will tell you this, just because you go vegan or plant-based, that does not mean that you are going to be skinny. <laughs> That does not necessarily mean that um, because you can eat, there's a lot of vegan junk food. I, what I like to say is that um, Oreo cookies is a, is a perfect example. Oreo cookies are vegan, but Oreo cookies are not whole food plant-based because there's no animal product in the Oreo cookie, but it is laced with sugars and fats and a whole bunch of chemicals. Right. So that's what keeps it from being whole food plant based. So you can have you can be a vegan and you can you can definitely eat lots of junk food because there's plenty of it out there. Let me just tell you, it's a lot out there. So just because you go, that does not necessarily mean that you you may be fully healthy if you're not going about it in a healthy way. Um, but the benefits, I think for me, the benefits have been great. It's helped me to maintain my weight level is but times I've gained some, but I, I know what why. It's because I probably ate a whole big old bag of lazy potato chips. Um, <laughs> so that's that's usually why. But um, the benefits, I said, um, you can help with diabetes. Lots of people have incredible um, stories of how they were they've gotten off their medicine um, as a result. People have changed their high blood pressure. Um, you know, I've heard people say that they're they're hair and nails and you know just overall you feel alive right because you're eating live foods so why not that's good well we're to our last kind of set of questions here so share anything you are doing to help others learn about plant-based veganism so um, I, I have a Facebook and Instagram account. And on Mondays, I hold a, a series called Vegan Curious Soul Sessions, where I interview different chefs. I interview um, coaches, fit, people, folks in the fitness air, um, arena. And it's just a casual conversation to talk, not just about the eating, but also about the mental, right? Because you can't talk about being healthy without talking about your mindset. And we've got to be healthy in our mindset. And that's where it kind of starts, right? So um, we'll we talk about that, share recipes. I've interviewed people sharing their journey. So that's really cool. And I'm loving that. I've been doing that since September. So that's been a lot of fun uh, talking with people. And not everybody that I have on the show is vegan. So just want everybody to know that. Um, the, um, but there are some who are. So that's probably one of the things I'm doing right now. Um, and, um, you know, working on creating some programs to help people transition um, based on their pace, you know, based on how, where they are right there, right now in this moment, what works for you. Yeah. Have you taken any action to promote health and wellness? Yeah, I've spoken at a couple of events um that uh like i think just recently cat fitness there was a program called heal the hood and they did a heal the hood tour and i spoke in san francisco over in hunter's point at the there's like a farm there and i had no idea i was like what <laughs> so that was really cool to speak at, at that event so i've spoken at a couple of different events over the last couple of years i've even spoken at sf veg fest in san francisco last year so that was cool too um, how do you act, how do you advocate for health and wellness in the black community? Well, one of the things that I was doing before we had um, the shutdown on things and we couldn't have events is I was hosting these events called um, Vegan Curious Taste Events, where you could come and you would get to taste the food and you would have to determine whether it was vegan or not vegan. I wouldn't tell you which one is which. So you would get macaroni and cheese and there'd be a vegan version of macaroni and cheese and a non-vegan version. I've done greens. I used it like Thanksgiving was when I first started it. Um, so that was, and it had an educational component to it where I talked about it. Um, there was also a cooking demonstration that showed you how to make it like the last one um, that we had. Um, we made crab cakes. And so I had one chef who was making the non-vegan version of crab cakes and I made the vegan version and had people taste them and then for them to see it. Because I think what happens is it, we are um, 
we see things and we already have something predetermined. And so you have to kind of change that, right? If I went in and said, oh, this is some vegan macaroni and cheese, what's the first thing somebody's going to do? Oh, no, nah, I want that because that's, you know, mm, that's probably, well, if I don't tell you and you eat it, you're like, wow, this is really good. It's macaroni and cheese. I have now just changed your mindset on how to look at it, right? Mm -hmm. Because you've got it. That's the first thing is you really do have to change your mindset and, and be open, you know, be open and willing to try different things. Um, so that's that's one of the things I was doing. I would love to do more for 2021. I'm trying to put some more things on the um, on the calendar. I would love to get involved in the churches in the urban right because there's a lot going on in the churches, and I think that that's a big. I would I I think that's a big opportunity to be able to step into churches and offer some sort of. Um, service. So that's something I'm going to think about doing for 2021. I'm glad you mentioned that because my church, um, is, which is located in the um, Fillmore, we um, created a health and wellness ministry. Part of mm. what it primarily has done during COVID is really making sure people who need food and groceries, we, we are partnering with the um, coalition to make sure that how people have access to groceries and then there are gift cards that the uh, membership get um, for the grocery store every month. But We've been oh. some health surveys and we've had some conversations, but would love to introduce this concept to the church because I think most of us just out of um, what's been passed down, we tend to stick with the diets that have been passed down to us for the most part. Exactly. I mean, it's, you know, food, the way we eat is, um, it's, it's, it's like a, a, like you said, it's a history lesson that's just passed on, right? Like it is, grandma's greens right who 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 walked away with that recipe to cook that or you know her sweet potato pie or the german chocolate cake or you know all these different things that we grow up eating in our in a lot of our urban communities okay and it's not just the urban communities it's not just african americans or black folks that have the issue too there are other groups too i mean it's, it's in like you know hispanic um you know, have have the same thing, right? Because they eat a lot of, you know, a lot, some of their things kind of have a good amount of interesting stuff to it, so, right? So they might make lard in their beef fried beans. So um, it's learning how to take that same thing that you enjoy and how can you make it in a healthy version, right? So that's what I have, that's what I'm striving to do. I love that. I know one, just, just, and then I'll get off of it, but we prior to us closing too we had moved from fried chicken whenever we were serving to baked chicken which was huge because everybody knows the baptist bird is what carries our sunday meals at, <laughs> at church settings so I was yeah, exactly. to, but to be able to introduce this and to educate and equip people um, mm -hmm. and help them create that mind shift to happen i think yeah. it's powerful in our um in our spiritual yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I would love to, you know, just come and do a cooking demo. You know, I think that it's it because you learn hands on. It's not until you taste it and and really dig in there. You you know, you can I could talk all day about it. You can talk, but until you actually see, feel, touch, smell it, you can't identify with it. So that was why I came up with those taste events. I think that's so cool. So I'm gonna um just pop up a couple of the pearls that I heard you say throughout this conversation. And then I'm, there's plenty, but I won't share them all. So <laughs> I heard you say um, that we have to break that generational, those health disparities that get passed down based on what we just talked about our diet and a lot of stuff is um, genetic, but we can do that by changing our diets and changing mm -hmm. um, um, just little pieces of our diet. Cause he hearing you talk about um, and I think I probably might have seen this too, uh, when you went to becoming a vegetarian. And that was mm -hmm. so strange to me as a kid because I'm like, you know me. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but to hear 30 years, to hear that that 30 year journey plus four more, now you've just restricted a lot of the other stuff. Like for me, that's empowering because I'm like, wow, I should have done this a long time ago, but I always struggle with, I don't feel full enough or whatever it is, but listening um, to you today has actually empowered me to really start Aww. to get more education about it. Yeah, yay. 
I heard you say that our bodies need movement. And so people have to find what works for their lifestyle. And that could be walking. It could be yoga. It could be the gym. It could be um, running versus in jogging. But people got to find what works for them. Mm -hmm. um, Plant-based vegan um, veganism can help increase energy and redu reduce inflammation. That stood out <laughs> to me because two years mm. ago, prior to me leaving my job, I was drinking Red Bulls, everything to find energy because I wasn't sleeping. I just had too much on my mind. So it was this mm -hmm. time mind going, can't find energy, can't find the time to go to the gym and also having a back injury at the same time. So mm. even like at the end of that was the, like it came to a head. I was on the cane last year this time. Wow. Um, two pinch nerves and um, herniated disc, all these things, but a oh. lot of stress, right? Right. Um, First thing had to happen was that mind shift that you talked about. Um, and just one, let me actually deal with my trauma and do some of that inner work. And then after that, um, I think in the last recent summer, I've lost like 30 pounds, but just changed oh, right. um, portion control, what I eat, drinking more water, walking at least three to five times a week, mm. just starting to ease my way back into it. And so I yeah. appreciate you um, sharing about the 200 and something days you've been walking? <laughs> <laughs> I've surprised myself. <laughs> I was like, it's, and, and what I will say this, what um, the walking has, it's a, it's a form of discipline, but it's showing me that I can be disciplined in other areas. So it'll be amazing that when you do one thing, it can, tra it can transform into other areas of your life if you so choose to do that, right? So just because you get disciplined, you can get disciplined in your eating and you'll be amazed. Oh, well, now you can do this. I to, it's, it's, it's the walking has become a habit. It, I mean, it's like, seriously, it's just, it's just a way of life at this point. Now I'm like, oh, I got to walk. I, even if it's 10 minutes, because I learned this from someone who said that exercise is cumulative. Okay. Exercise is cumulative. If you do 15 minutes, First thing in the morning, do 15 minutes on a, a, on a lunch. You've done 45 minutes for the day. Mm -hmm. That, and you know, because it's all about calories and energy, mm -hmm. right? So the energy that you spend out, because there's energy in and there's energy out. When you exercise and you make movement and you reduce like your portion sizes, like you've been doing, that's the energy that you are that you're taking out. The food that you eat and sit around and being sedentary, that is calories that you're taking in. So if you take out, if you, if you extend more than what you take, that you take in, you will actually release some weight. It's just, it's just gonna happen. Thank you. And so my one last pearl before I hand it back to you is, it starts with the mind shift. And so being open and willing to try new and different things. So yes. I really appreciate you coming on today and sharing just your journey um, with plant-based, being a plant-based vegan. And so if there's one last tip or piece of advice that you'd like to share with the viewers, the last voice they hear will be yours. I would like to say, take it one plate at a time. Okay. You don't have to look at the whole staircase. Just look at the step that you are getting ready to take right now. Right. So that's what I say. Take it a step at a time. Take it a plate at a time. You don't have to think about, oh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Just take it for right now in this moment and celebrate it. And then do it in the next moment and celebrate it. Next thing you know, man, you look up, you're like, what? I did, I did all that. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.